It's time for another OTR Central Retro Review, and this one is interesting, to say the least. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've come up with a formal opinion of this show or not. Eighteen years ago in this month, back in May of 1995, the WWF decided to go with a new concept for the pay-per-view business model for the wrestling business. Mm -hmm. And... Ultimately, the in-your-house concept was created. You kind of give a little bit of the backstory on this, because this is kind of important for people to understand. Well, originally they had the big four pay-per-views, and they added in the King of the Ring. So then they had five. Well, WWE or WWF at that time, being the money churner that they were, they wanted to have monthly pay-per-views. Why not do a monthly two-hour pay-per-view in between those big ones? And then, born in your house. And part of this, too, was they also knew, I think, at the time that the business didn't necessarily support having a bunch, having 12 full price pay per views, mm -hmm. but they wanted to make a little more revenue. And this is also in the aftermath of the steroid trial. So, you know, money was something that was definitely important to the company at that time. Yep. So they came up with these half price, I think they were like 15 to 20 bucks uh, for these in your house pay per views. Like you said, uh, about half the time as compared to the regular pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the concept, though. I kind of miss the concept. And this, uh, to me, was also a way for them to experiment and do some different gimmicky things depending on the month or depending on oh, what type sure. of feud was going on. Or where they were at, even, because they had the Canadian one. You know? Yeah, I absolutely. So I do kind of miss the old in-your-house concept. Mm -hmm. I wish they would go to this more. I would almost be in favor of if they charged a little bit more for the big four pay-per-views, mm -hmm and charge less for the filler pay-per-views, maybe even only had to be a two-hour show. Even toward the end of the In Your House concept that they did, they kept some of the names along, like Judgment Day and No Way Out, that they, that right, they did toward right. the end, and then they utilized those for on a regular basis. This event was held in Syracuse, New York, in the Onondaga, I believe it was, War Memorial Coliseum, all 7,000 people that paid to watch this. Oh, what a spectacle it <laughs> what a maneuver! What a <laughs> now that's something you're going to apologize for here right now. Now, the commentary team for this was Vince McMahon and Doc Hendricks. Poor Michael P.S. Hayes. It's, it's like, like you're watching it and you're expecting him to sell you a piano necktie or something. They made him cut his hair. Oh. This would, You know what, to be honest with you, and I think even people in the WWF would admit it, Vince would admit it now even. That was stupid. It was just a time where they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They had a couple of things that worked, but most everything else didn't. Or they tried to outthink themselves. And having one of the free birds, Michael P.S. Hayes, one of the great talkers in the history of the wrestling business, cut his hair, become, as Michael Hayes has described in the past, a caricature of himself stuck in the 80s, was just dumb. Dumb. I thought the commentary for this pay-per-view was pretty good, though. I thought him and Vince had a nice chemistry in their own way. What a maneuver! Are you going to apologize to the to, to gorilla now? Gorilla started it, so... Hell, but, hell, for all we know, Gorilla was from the gorilla position, baby, <laughs> telling Vince in his ear to keep saying, What a maneuver! What a maneuver! What a maneuver! Keep saying that! Move it over! <laughs> now, going into this pay-per-view, there was no Shawn Michaels. I, nope. I guess he decided that he wanted a few months off. Um, so one theme that you noticed was that Bret Hart was being pushed very strongly. He, yeah, so show. much so he had two matches, not just one. Um, the show kicked off though, Hakushi versus Bret Hart. Uh, if there's one match that you should watch on this pay per view, this has got to be the one. This is the one. This was really good. Yeah. Uh, Hakushi though, I never got the gimmick. Yeah, they kept trying to sell that those were tattoos. <laughs> I just. <laughs> okay. It just didn't, it never resonated to me. I don't think it ever resonated with the audience. And like you said, kind of after this, it kind of dropped the feud between the two. And, and you know, the whole around, like, salad around. bowl on the head and carrying around a man purse and having a Kiyosato out there as his manager or whatever his name was. Like, but the match was really good. I thought they had good chemistry with each other. And the fact that Hakushi was a little bit more of a high flyer, so it brought a different element. You know, similar to what a Shawn Michaels would do in the future with Bret Hart. Sure. Um, yeah, this was a really good match. Bret Absolutely. Hart would beat a previously undefeated Hakushi. Yep. Match of the night, no question. And a match that would belong on any pay-per-view and a hell of an opener. Oh, yeah. Easily. The sad thing was, this was the opener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we get on to the rest of the show. And, of course, the show starts going downhill when Jeff Jarrett makes an appearance. 
You had a handicap match of Razor Ramon <laughs> versus Jeff Jarrett and the Roadie. Poor Road Dog. His favorite part of the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this match wasn't terrible. It just wasn't very good. Um, yeah, and it, the reason, part of the reasons why it wasn't very good is that whole ending. You know, and I understand that you had to get Razor over and stuff like that, but then you had all these people interfering. Why the fuck did they put Just Incredible in a fucking jock strap? Or strap or call him Aldo Montoya, the Portuguese man of war. I'm sorry, but in America, who gives a shit about Portugal? I don't mean there's offense to the people of Lisbon or anywhere else in Portugal. I'm just being realistic here. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, really. I mean, it, and they never gave us a reason to give a fuck. They ended up making him a jobber, but they brought him out here like he's some big hero. Even Doc Hendricks mentioned that he had a jock strap on his head. <laughs> wow. Oh, and then don't forget who else came out of the fucking blue. <laughs> who is he? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And then the after interview afterwards, it's Samuel Vega. Ah, how about that, huh? Yeah. With, with all of his inherent mic skills. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, Razor Moan won. Which yeah. is a handicap at Jenny won. <laughs> he beat the road dog and your boy, Double J. Of course, he wasn't doing the job. Piece <laughs> of shit. Anyways, we had a King of the Ring qualifying match. Mabel versus Adam Bomb. Uh, lasted all about 90 seconds. About as long as it took me to announce the next match. You know, I hadn't seen this for so long. You know, my immediate thought when I saw I saw. Mark Henry! Oh, no, he's just way too big and tall. <laughs> <laughs> but you could see where the plan was here. Is they were setting up for the King of the Ring later later on, and they wanted to get Mabel over like a million bucks, so they had him go out there and squash the shit out of Adam Bob in short order. And it worked. The Adam Bob character, to me, is yet another um, personification of the problems of the WWF of the mid-'90s. Just these hokey... Dumbass characters that didn't make sense in the 80s, didn't make sense in the 90s, sure as fuck don't make sense now. Which brings us to the tag team title match. Ugh. I okay. feel bad At least for one Bart tag team in there was good. The other ones, not so They were good. the smoking guns. Yeah, yeah, the smoking guns were just horrendous. But the, the greatness of Yokozuna and Owen Hart as a tag team, you cannot. You just can't go wrong with that. Like you said off camera, you're talking about perhaps the biggest band in the history of the company and one of the smaller the guys. guys. Yeah. <laughs> what a great tag team. Perfect. One of those times where random people being put together in a tag team works, and it's a good thing. As far as the smoking guns, they were a good tag team in terms of the way they worked. They had good chemistry, but the yeah, gimmick was so fucking gimmick was stupid. stupid. Oh, my God. Where, where, where did they get them from? A rodeo or something? I Maybe guess. this would have worked in the 50s. When you had Bonanza on TV and Westerns were very, very, very big, the 50s and 60s. Maybe even the, maybe even the 70s. Maybe. Yeah, because you still have gun smoke around and stuff like that, you know, a little bit. But, but in the mid-90s, mm -hmm. yeah, Spark yeah. Plug Bob Howley called and said the smoking guns were a shit gimmick. Yep. Um, it's amazing how Billy Gunn was able to recover. and you know, Nice Bart, mullets that they had, though. And... Uh, Bart Gunn was able to get the knock, fuck knocked out of him by Butterbean a few years later at Mania. Yeah. All right, so the Bret Hart saga in this pay-per-view, this was building throughout the whole course of the night. Jerry Lawler kept wanting to have his match with Bret Hart. Hurry up and do it because... Because Bret Hart supposedly hurt his knee getting out of the ring after the Hakushi match and whatnot. And backseat, backstage, he was icing his knee and everything else. But, you know, it's a testament to Bret Hart that he went out there and worked a second match on this card because, again, there was no Shawn Michaels. This was just a company lacking for talent in general. But I don't understand about this pay-per-view is you had people like Davey Boy and you had Undertaker versus Kama. These were fucking dark matches. There yeah. was a Davey Boy versus Owen and a King of the Ring qualifying match. These were dark matches. These matches belonged on the fucking card, in my opinion. You know, it, Yeah, easily. You make know. Razor Ramon a fucking... Uh, Dark match. Or that Mabel and... Yeah, exactly. Or even the tag team title match. Yeah. Just, whew, they were lacking for star power and they kept the Undertaker off the main card. If you got the Coliseum Hope video version, though, you did get to watch the match. Yeah. And I actually did. Mm -hmm. You take it. Uh, Bret Hart versus Jerry Lawler, though, not all that good. Yeah. Again, a lot of interference in this match by one Hakushi. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. It was just... Bland. It's kind of hard though because when you watch this and you already saw Hakushi versus Bret Hart, you, you were hoping. I was hoping going back and watching it that maybe uh, Bret versus Jerry would be good in a different way. And it was just, it was like, at times Lawler in that time frame to me 
was like over the top annoying. Mm -hmm. When maybe sometimes he didn't have to be so over the top annoying. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But maybe if he would have buttoned it back a little bit, yeah. it, maybe it would have been better. Where do you think it was Mother? It was on Mother's Day, and he brought out this beautiful, which hot, was a like theme of this whole year old chick. You know, and said, "This is my mother." If that was your mom, would you still be breastfeeding? Absolutely. Yes, yep. I think I would be too. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about the main event, the real feature attraction of the whole fucking pay per view was the fact that they did a house giveaway. Yeah. They give away a home. They're in Syracuse, New York, so they're giving away a home in Orlando, Florida, for whatever the fuck reason. That's how they were kicking off in your house. And they had all of these envelopes and postcards in this big, huge stuff. Carded by cops. <laughs> Pat and Gail and that Stephanie bitch are sitting there pushing weights. And <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> That was entertaining. <laughs> that, was more, I kind of wish. that was more entertaining than the Waller Hart match. But it was it was corny mid nineties it shit at its finest. It definitely fit that time frame. And I I do throw this out there is that I kind of wish they would do a giveaway like this maybe next year at WrestleMania thirty. Give away a car or hey. a couple of cars or give away a house. Do something special like Section that. Section two hundred four, row thirty, seat thirty two. You have just won a car. How great would that be? I mean, you're creating your own moment. you got enough other bullshit that goes on in a mania anyways. Why not make it something like this where one person right. could win something big? Be cool. Just, but that was another big thing. This was um, on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. which wouldn't seem to be a great business philosophy. Um, you were giving away a house. And then you decided to have Psycho Sid versus Diesel for the WWF Championship at the main event. Go back to the house again. Do you know who won that house? Yeah, who was it? It was a little ten-year-old punk kid. <laughs> I saw the video a long time ago. They let him out of this limousine, had his parents in tow, and then that, that crazy Stephanie chick was out there showing in the house. Isn't this cool? And then guess who showed up in a closet? The Bushwhackers. Who would you want? Of all the people that you want in your house, you would not want them. But anyway, I digress. Now, notice he's, he keeps diverting away from talking about the main event. There's a reason. <laughs> Psycho Sid rules the world, baby. Yeah, well, at least he didn't break his leg on this one. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Diesel showed off all six of his moves, including the hair flip here. Yep. Um, Psycho Sid landed a power bomb. Yep. <laughs> and that was your match. Oh, wait a minute. We had more interference, didn't we? <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> this feud wasn't done yet. Ted DiBiase, okay. he came out there with... Tataka! Why did they ever turn to Taka heel? That was so dumb. He was working as a face, and they just turned him heel for oh, whatever the fuck reason. I have no he idea. turned on Luger. Yeah, yeah, that was stupid. That was dumb. Uh, DiBiase was already out there with, you know, but and then they... And then Bam Bam comes up and makes the same of all people. Somebody who hated the click. <laughs> the 1995 WWF at its finest. And that's really what this pay-per-view was. Without Shawn Michaels, this is pretty much what you had. Yeah, no clear winner in your main event. Okay, well, this is what you yeah. get. You had you had Bret Hart was a star of the night. Yep. Razor Ramon in a few D, quite frankly, had no business being in. Mabel being pushed in a spot where he had no business being pushed. Uh, Owen Yokozuna not really having anything else for them. You put them together, and hey, there you go, something successful. Uh, and then Psycho Sid and Diesel still at that time where they loved featuring the big men in the main event scene. Uh, your final grade for the show, if you had to give it a grade. Uh, C minus. <laughs> That's just for effort. <laughs> At least they were trying something different. It, it launched a new concept, which I always, when it's the first of anything, I've always tended to grade it on a little bit more of a positive curve mm -hmm. because it was successful enough. I think it did like 330,000 buys, Somewhere which was a solid it was solid. Buy but, my God, I mean, the show itself was just horrendous, so that brings my grade down a lot lower. Than yeah, I will give this show nothing more than a... A C or C minus. I think that's a fair grade. This was not a great show. Uh, the storylines going into it were not all that great. Uh, this show lacked star power. Uh, if you if you like match quality, watch the first match. You can skip the rest of the show. Pretty much. Agreed. Yeah. So have we figured out what we're going to talk about for the next retro review yet? I got some ideas. What do you think? Uh, I don't know yet. I tell you what. I know in a few weeks we're going to do Over the Edge uh, 99. Mm. We'll be doing that on May 23rd, for those of you that care. Uh, give us your suggestions for a May pay-per-view from the past, regardless of company, that you want us to review. And whichever one looks the best to us, we'll find it online, we'll watch it, and we'll review it for you. 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 You.